I am Anil Kumar. We will understand limits of trigonometric functions and I have taken up few very basic videos to understand the concept. In this particular video, we will find limit when theta approaches infinity for sine theta, limit when theta approaches 0 for cosecant theta, limit when theta approaches pi by 2 for tan theta. This is second in my series. In the first uh, set, we discussed about the limit for trigonometric basic ratios at uh, a finite point, right? Now, let's see these limits. So, when we talk about limit when theta approaches 0, let's look into the sine wave first. So sine wave is kind of like this and it kind of continues, right? <laughs> now, if you look at this, we are not sure at infinity, when theta approaches infinity, where will it approach, correct? Now, since you can see there is no horizontal asymptote, no horizontal asymptote. The two things to remember. One, there is no horizontal asymptote. Second is, it's kind of oscillating. So, so when theta approaches zero for functions which do not have horizontal asymptote or which kind of are oscillating, right, kind of like this, you're not sure at infinity where will you be. So in this case, the limit does not exist. So in this case, the limit does not exist. So safely, we can say limit does not exist since we are not very sure where will the function be when theta approaches infinity, correct? Okay. So I hope that part is very clear. Okay, now let's look into the second question, which is limit of cosecant theta, the reciprocal of sine theta when theta approaches zero. Okay, so, so let me sketch the cosecant theta here now. So we'll start from here and sketch the cosecant theta graph. Okay, now reciprocal, that means it is equals to limit when theta approaches zero for one over sine theta. Is it okay? Yeah, that's what it is. Now, there will be vertical asymptotes at these zeros, correct? So we'll have vertical asymptotes here. So I'm doing reciprocal of sine theta, right? This is cosecant theta. This is theta for us. Okay. Similarly, here also we'll have, and the graph will be, since this value is one, so one reciprocal is one. The graph will be, okay. <laughs> so one is, this is zero, so we have a asymptote here also, right? Okay. So basically, the graph of cosecant theta is going to be kind of like this. Is it okay? So positive reciprocal is positive, negative is negative, right? So this part is negative, it is going to be kind of like this. I mean, this is one minus, this is one plus, correct? So basically, this will be your minus one. So as you can see, when you're approaching zero from both sides, you approach either negative infinity or positive infinity. So therefore, the limit for cosecant theta as theta approaches zero does not exist. Is that okay? So for reciprocal functions, the limit does not exist uh, for sine theta. That means cosecant theta limit when theta approaches zero does not exist, correct? Now let's look into the limit for tan theta as theta approaches pi by 2. So in this particular example, we have taken few trigonometric functions for which limit may not exist. That's the whole idea. So that should help you to find limits of trigonometric functions. In the previous video, we took uh, the points where the limit existed, right? I mean, okay, I mean, this is much, much short. Let's forget about it. Anyway, the graph for the tan function is kind of like this. Okay, so let me do half of it, right? It's, it is kind of like this. This is not, a, okay, so let me write down this as pi by two, one pi by two. This is pi for us, and this is, okay, three pi by two. You can clearly see when you're approaching pi by two, then from the left side, you approach positive infinity. So we can say limit, when theta approaches pi by 2 from the left side for tan theta, you are actually approaching 
positive infinity. However, limit when theta approaches pi by 2 from the right side for tan theta, it is negative infinity. Do you see that? And since you know you are approaching positive or negative infinity, we can say that this limit does not exist. Is it okay? So for these three examples, there could be many such examples in trigonometric functions where the limit may not exist. That's a good thing to remember. Okay. So I hope that helps. Now let's move on to another kind of videos which are sine of cosine functions. And let's try to figure out what the limit could be in those cases. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope this series is helpful for especially those who are just starting to understand what is limits for trigonometric functions. Thank you and all the best.